Hello and welcome to the Excellent English Club. Today's topic is very important elements of spoken English. Okay? In the previous video, I have told you some elements of spoken English, but these elements are very important. That's why I am giving you this another video on this topic. Okay? So let's start. Elements of spoken English. Number one, vocabulary. Number two, pronunciation and sounds. Number three, syllable structure. Number four, sentence patterns. Number five, pausing. And number six, drilling. These are the six very important elements of spoken English. One by one, I will let you know something about these elements. Okay? Look. Vocabulary and pronunciation. Number one. Suitable vocabulary. I have written this title because vocabulary is a very vast field, very vast subject. But I am talking about the suitable vocabulary. The vocabulary which is suitable for speaking okay look here a list of 2500 to 3000 words by michael west there is a list you will find on internet you just write the name of the writer michael west 3000 words you will find this list in this list you can get you can find all the words which we use in everyday conversation. At least 90% words you can easily find in this list. And 70 to 80% words you already know. Sec first thing. Second thing, people say that can we learn speaking? Yes. If you are at class pass, you know that much vocabulary to communicate in English. Okay, number B is, you can see here, that is sounds and pronunciation. Now this topic is not a very small topic. I cannot explain it within two or three sentences. So I will give you a separate video on this topic. Okay, now move to the next point. Syllable structure. This is a very important element. Look here. A syllable is a word or a part of word which is spoken in one stroke of just pulse. What is this? This is a word or a part of word which is spoken in one stroke. For example, if I say dog, it is one stroke. Cat, one stroke. So if we have one stroke, that is one syllable. If we have two strokes, for example, today, two strokes, it means this word has two syllables. Okay? Now look at the example. Number one, car. What is this? Car. Number two, tiger. Tiger, car, one syllable word, tiger, two syllables word, clear? Another example, boy, one syllable word, zebra, two syllables word. Another example, elephant, elephant, how many? Three strokes, elephant. Elephant. So this word is three syllables word. Look another example. Banana and watermelon. Look here. Look at the picture. Banana. I have just cut the fruit also to make you understand how you can break the syllable. 
right? Banana, three syllables. Watermelon, four. So this is called syllable. One more example I'll give you and you will easily understand what is a syllable. Look, this is the table. Two, one stroke, one syllable. Today, two stroke, two syllables. Tomorrow, three syllables. Preposition. Preposition. How many? Four strokes, four syllables. University, university, five syllables. A word may be a one syllable word or more than one syllable up to 15 or 16 syllables maybe. Okay. So here you can, you can easily understand what is a syllable. Why I'm telling you what is syllable? Because whenever we speak any word, we have more than one syllable. If one syllable is there, no problem. If more than one syllable is there, then we have to speak one syllable a lower and the other one is little higher. For example, in the word university, as I told you, there are five syllables. One syllable will be higher and the other four will be lower. But how? Look here. University. The third one, were, will be very high. And the first, second, and fourth, fifth will be lowered. Look here. University. University. Similarly, in the word tomorrow, the second syllable, more, will be higher than the others. How will you pronounce it? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is not correct. Tomorrow is also not correct. How you will speak? Tomorrow. So the second syllable will be stressed. What is this? Stress. So it will be stressed and you will speak a little louder, higher or longer. That's all. Clear understand? Now move to the next element. Sentence patterns. Sentence patterns are formulas. Okay, for example, look here. First formula, subject plus verb. Subject plus verb. Look at the example. Deepak eats, Mohan sleeps, Salim will arrive tomorrow. What is this? These are the examples. Subject plus verb. First formula, first pattern. Second pattern, subject plus verb plus object. Subject plus verb plus object. I like banana. This is an example. He likes his car. He's playing football. Okay? Subject plus verb plus object. Next, subject plus verb plus adjectives. Look here. Subject plus verb plus adjective. He's serious. The manager is smart. Fruits seems fresh. So, adjectives are there. The next one is subject plus verb plus adverb. Mohan is there. Restaurant is here. Raining is everywhere. This is adverb. The next is subject plus verb plus noun. He is my manager. The girls are student. John is the player. So these are the patterns. What is this? Sentence patterns. Subject verb, subject verb, object, subject verb, uh, adjective, subject verb, adverb, subject verb, no. Okay. Now move to the next element that is body language. This is also very important. You know, whenever you speak anything, you just not speak with your mouth or with your tongue. You generally use your whole body. You speak with eyes, you speak with your 
face with the speaking of with your hands the whole body speaks okay this is called body language look here be confident face to face eye contact smile and friendly use gesture be confident means when you speak you should be a confident person okay you should be confident face to face means you have to face the listener whenever you are speaking the audience should be face to face with you okay eye contact some people you know they hide their face like this or sometimes they they do, don't make eye contact okay but what you have to do you have to make eye contact right next thing is smile and friendly always there should be a smile on your face which shows that you are a very confident person clear the last one is use gesture gesture as i am using my hand this type this type this up down like this sometimes i am demonstrating like this saying like this 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 is gesture look at this picture here the man is saying something and this he is just raising his hand it means this whole body is talking to you understand this is body language the next is pausing pausing means just to stop somewhere where necessary for example if i say he is a good player a, a student and a businessman so after he is a good player i will make a comma a student comma and a businessman so what i am saying he is a good player a student and a businessman so wherever i am putting comma i will make a pause means i will stop a little bit then i will speak whenever you have any comma any full stop any semicolon you will have to make a little pause then you go further this is called pausing right the last is imitation and drilling imitation and drilling means to make copy copying something or somebody okay body language imitation right the second thing is drilling what is drilling okay what is drilling drilling means copying something or somebody is imitating somebody's body language or voice this is drilling as i told you drilling means voice copying look at the example for example if you want to drill a student so whatever the sentence you will say he will repeat it again okay look here he is a pillar a student will also say he is a pillar john is an engineer student will also say like this john is an engineer i am going to market he will also say like this i am going to market so this is drilling and this is very important why because our tongue is not habitual to speak english words okay if we will drill so our tongue will be habitual to speak these words so it will be easy for us to speak english second thing you can do one thing you just take any paragraph from the newspaper or from any book and you read it loudly this is another exercise for habituating your tongue because this is the basic problem of indian people that their tongue is not habitual to speak english words this is the basic problem that is why they they can't speak very fast they can't they can't speak fluently okay so i think you all understand what i wanted to convey you and thank you very much goodbye